It feels like every time we play, there's like a narrator behind us, like David Attenborough is like behind us just narrating how we play. The human contemplates his next move, but then quickly springs forth a wild animal. What's this? The common wall lizard. The human has clearly never been to a zoo. What a waste. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're reviewing our favorite game of all time, or one of our favorite games, which is a spoiler. <laughs> it's Ark Nova. It's gonna be a positive review, obviously. Now you don't even have to watch it, hooray. <laughs> Welcome, my friends, to Ark Nova, a two to four player game that plays in roughly two to four hours. Ark Nova places you at the helm of a contemporary zoo, where your goal is to run the most successful zoo possible by building pens, housing animals, supporting conservation projects, and hiring brilliant specialists. Where it shines is the wonderfully interesting escalator of five action cards that dictate your actions for the round. How powerful that action will be is determined by where in the row you take your chosen action. So, I might really need to build this turn, but if I already built recently, I'll faff around and get a weaker build. The actions themselves are easy peasy. Association provides a cheeky little worker placement mechanic, allowing you to gain a partnership with a desired continent, do a wee bit of research, or support this wonderful world of ours and engage in conservation efforts. Build offers a charming tile placement element. Sponsors allows you to play those cards that provide you various powers and abilities to make your zoo wonderful. Cards either gets you money or allows you to take more cards. And finally, animals lets you place some splendid beasts into those newly built enclosures. Many of your valiant efforts will contribute to your conservation score and your appeal score. When one player crosses these two markers, the game ends and whoever has the largest gap between those two scores, provided they've crossed, is the winner. Cheerio. One thing I like about Arc Nova is that it has a really good theme. Like it's really well integrated into the game, right? I love because that's like the most important thing for me in games. Like, it's done like really well. Theme specifically is to games for me. Because every game I don't like, it's not only because the theme isn't super strong. It's kind of like just you could replace it easily on the theme and it feels like it's And it the makes same learning game. the game easier too. Like when, when yeah. the theme works really well, the actions that you perform, they just make sense. When they're, they're thematically intuitive. tied. Yeah. yeah, I feel like they're intuitive and it makes it so natural to play the game. It yeah. makes it so addictive. After the first game, I was like, I have a whole bunch of ideas how to play this game next time. Yeah, and all, of the, all the animals, like the animals work really well. The, the deck has something like 200 different things. It's a thick boy. Yeah, and, and the animals, what's interesting is that the powers that the animals provide, somehow they've managed to, yes, it's, it's somewhat abstract, it has to be, but the powers kind of make sense to the animal. Like I think the crocodiles have the snapping ability, which you know, which is clever. It makes sense and allows you to draw from the the card row as if it's snapping it. And there's a lot of things like the monkeys that can pilfer it so you could take somebody else's thing. Yeah, it's great because there's so many games that I play where the theme just kind of washes away as you as you're playing. You know, you're looking at cards sometimes, and the cards just become numbers. You don't care what's on them. But with here, the game refuses to allow you to simply look at everything as numbers. You know, you have to look at the requirements for the for the zoo animal. You know, if it's aquatic. If it's land you have to look at the country that it comes from because you might get bonuses for that yeah you know, that's those, really cool yeah and those fit thematically the powers that the animals provi provide all these things work so well together that the game just basically makes sure that you are always thinking about theme as well as mechanics and that that's a wonderful thing every single detail is just so well thought out that it makes the whole gameplay feel so seamless yeah. and that some to some level i'm kind of still suppressed with this game because it feels so educational it's like, I'm learning. It, it honestly does. It doesn't feel like, you know, some games feel like it's just repetitive and you're only there to play strategy or only there because like yeah. it's luck. There's, so, there's something about this game that makes it feel so intuitive, so special and so like new every time you play, which keeps us coming back to it. Some games have these, these this feeling where you, the end game ends and you kind of look at your board and you're like, okay. Whereas this game, it's like, oh yeah, look at all the stuff I've got. Look at all these animals that I built. And that's fun. And who knew an build, building a zoo was going to be fun? It's a zoo. And the game just feels really engaging. I love the way the card action system works and how they go along this sort of carousel. And you know, you can play something at the one position, but it'll be a little weaker. And so maybe you're just like, well, you know what, if I just wait until it's like the four or five, or maybe I can use these X to tokens. The game provides you these little tokens that sort of help you mitigate uh, where that card is in the position. 
And that, that, that's a really interesting choice. And it's, it's fun because it's like, it's also really simple because it's, in essence, you only have five actions that you can perform. And it's engaging every time. Like every action that you perform, it's, it's a tough choice. And that, that's fun. But there's something about this mechanism that makes it so clean. I really like when games don't have, you don't have to kind of keep the cards in your hand or you don't have to keep a whole bunch of stuff like looking through and deciding. It's very clean. It's laid out. You look at all the actions you have. Very simple and very um, organized. And definitely the thing that keeps us coming back to this game over and over and over again is, I think it's the variability. It's the variability. It's that every game feels incredibly unique, whether it's the, the massive deck of cards or, you know, the, the, the end game goals that'll pop out that'll completely structure the way you play. What action cards you decide to upgrade can completely change things. There's, there's a lot of variability and it's, it's refreshing. It's nice. And, I, and to add to that part, I think the part that surprised me the most is I normally love variability with player powers. Well, individual like different well you do get stuff. player power you, I was gonna say, you do but that is not an important part in variability here like most time like older games i feel that the variability only happens to the what you know the, the luck of the drawing sometimes the, yeah the powers are but this game it doesn't really matter which board you get and the unique skill the player power provides you mm -hmm. that doesn't add very much to it you even if you have the same use the basic board every single time you can still play with a different strategy every single time and have a great time doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, but the boards themselves do add variability, like basically an A side and a B side, and the A side is basic, and the other side is basically more advanced. It just sort of pushes you in a, a direction, but it's it's a, a slight nudge. So. Yeah, it's like that. Same as like you start the game with shared common objectives, mm -hmm. like kind of overall objectives, and you also have individual personal objectives. But halfway through the game, you get rid of one of your personal objectives. And I think. A lot of games that um, have that kind of like throughout the game you get rid of when you gain new objectives, it really forces like every single gameplay to be so unique. And like even there's something as simple as deciding because you can't up you can't uh, upgrade, upgrade every five. single action card. All five action cards you can't. It's impossible. You can do four, but you can't that do we, five. This no, you can't. You definitely can't. I mean, I don't know. Maybe some expansion in the future will <laughs> Maybe happen. in the future, yeah. But but in the base set, you can't you can't upgrade them. And so it's an interesting choice too. And I think that's part of the very that's a big part of the variability. Because at the end of the game, I'm like, oh, I really wish I wanted to upgrade my animals card to build that cool bear or something like that. But then you're just like, well, uh, we'll just play again. We'll play again. And this time, I'm gonna upgrade animals. And that's another way the variability is added. Yeah, it's not just the upgrades aren't just you know like your powers plus ten or times two. The upgrades like will not upgrading a card will restrict you from doing some action yeah they have a big impact and i've never been a big fan of tile placement in games that have a bunch of other mechanisms going on but really? yeah not usually you not usually because sometimes it just feels like a hodgepodge but i, I think like it. it's more like tactile it yeah, a different layer for this game for this game i really enjoy it i think it's done really well here and I, and I really like that sort of spatial puzzle and figuring out, okay, how to, how to do all that. You and your spatial puzzles, it's not a puzzle. It is like a puzzle. You, you're trying to like piece it together and like... For anyone that doesn't have the game, you don't do this at all. This is well, just... Well, I'm not a Rubik's Cube. I, this, is just, this is just the universal symbol for puzzle. Gesture, the hand gesture for puzzle. Because I'm solving Comments Rubik's Comment below Cube. <laughs> if you ever seen someone do that for a puzzle. <laughs> No, that's like dropping Connect Four things. <laughs> it's <not a> puzzle. <laughs> Neither yeah, it's, of those. Are it, it's, like, it's a great way to build the zoo. It, it's it's really cool. It's really cool. And there's lots of cards in too that, that that can interact with the board and change the way you you lay things out. It's fun. Yeah, I I do agree that I mean I've always liked the puzzle. <laughs> and you get the dopamine stuff because basically when you when, when you, you cover put up tiles yeah. down on your on your mat, that's what they call it, the zoo mat. Are you putting like. Because they basically have enclosures that are certain shapes and sizes. So the puzzle he's referring to is basically finding a way to lay as many tiles as possible to close off your entire yeah. map. And like he said, dopamine hits. When you cover some areas of your map, you do get... Horses. Exactly. All right. All right. We're too much too much gushing. We have to cover some stuff that we don't like. I don't have anything. We do. I mean, I, we definitely do. There are some things. things. They're not big though, but they're but they're there. And if you're trying to make an you know an informed purchasing decision, you should probably know what they are in case these are just red flags for you. But one thing is player interaction. 
um, there, there is not a lot of player interaction. You are involved in their player's turn in that you're invested and like you like to watch and see what they're doing because you might be racing for the same objectives. Oh. But beyond that, there's no interaction. What? No. There's, there's none. Okay, disagree already. There's and none. he's also wrong. Um, no, there's no he's interaction. Wrong. Because there's a lot of cards where you get points or bonuses based on how many like certain type of animal sure. that you and the other zoo have all together. Sure. So you are constantly looking at a person zoo to keep track of like, oh, if you build another polar bear or the bear, I get additional points for something. Yeah, it does have that. It does have that. But Which, like, I mean, come on. Like, we play so many strategy games and we really only like heavy strategy. Not only like, but we, that's what we mostly play. Though a lot of those have no interaction. Yes, there are games. I mean, I, like, it's like okay, it's like game store. Okay, goodbye. I see you in the game with scores yeah. are valid. Like that's how we have a lot of games go. And this one, at least, we're constantly looking at each other's and Hi, sometimes like, and worried about the points. And we're also sharing this. Well, you could draft cards. the same cards. And you're also um, sharing the <laughs> other board of like association tasks, where if you want to buy a continent, I think they call it partnership. Make a partnership like with the country. Yeah. Continent. Yeah. That's a continent. Oh yeah. Sir. I guess the <laughs> and you make five a continents. With the um, yeah. So you are fighting for those um, shared resources, or if you want to make a donation, those are limited donations. Well. So we do this sure. quite a lot of sharing. <laughs> sure. Going There's on. some interaction. And if you take um, what do you call it, loan or take money, I just you know take income from me. Yeah. But yeah, when you take income, you move this little coffee cup mug thing, and you know when you whoever does more often, you do. What do you call that? Like start a break? Or yeah, it's, like a, a it's a break. Yeah, For basically it travels along this this path. So your actions time. do affect your even your no, opponents. It, yeah, yeah, margin. Okay, fine. It's the most interactive game of all time. Yes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, but you should be aware it's not the most interactive. But in terms of like you know your standard fair heavy euro, it it, it does have a bit more interaction. Yeah, than... Compared to the right set of the right crowd, compared to a party game, oh sure. no interaction. Sure. Yeah, but compared to other games like this. A lot of interaction. This game also, I think, might suffer from a one runaway leader um, effect. I, I do feel that if the people at the table are not equally skilled, there's going to be a rough time. Yeah, it sucks to suck. Yeah, the, like <laughs> me and Kim play exclusively two players, and and we if, if we ever play with anybody else, they're just going to get demolished. They're going mind. to get demolished. That's not a con. Yeah, but it's not going to be fun for them That's because okay. once you start getting out ahead, you, there's no there's no catching up. You're not catching up. And like, so so if you're equally skilled, it's perfectly fine. This is not big negative. But if you have very diverse group of people that you like to play with, you're like, I wanna play sometimes with my partner or two players. And then sometimes I'll bust it out with my buddies who come over once every few months. It's gonna be rough. It's gonna be rough. Just don't be a poop head and don't be aggressive. You know, if you're playing well, with someone that you know is playing with You can time. gimp yourself, I guess. Like ha handicap yourself. Yeah. So, the other difficulties of the game is that it can feel a little swingy at times. What? Like, okay. There are the two end game cards that you get that you have to pick from for your private objectives. Mm -hmm. There are some that are just significantly better. Like they're just easier to do yes. than others. Yes. And that, that could be a little rough. Now, thank you for that you have two so you can choose between them. Yes. Um, but there are other things too. You know, there might be a, uh, a, a point where you just don't get sponsors. I, we've played games before where I just, the sponsors don't come up on the board. She's got a handful of sponsors. I'm not getting any and that's tough. That's okay. really so tough. So his big qualm of the game is he's very unlucky in life. <laughs> no, but I'm just <laughs> saying, me. luck can impact this game. Any, luck any, can impact any game. Yeah, any game where there's cards. Any game where there's cards, yeah, there's going to be some luck. But it does feel a little swingy sometimes. And there are some animal cards that are friggin' bonkers. Like if you have, there's, I think it's like a gray elephant. I can't remember what it is. But it's, it's But it's strong as hell. But the insane cards often make the requirements to complete them by them like actually put them down in your zoo is so hard yeah i don't feel like it's unfair because even if you get given like many times we both had this situation where the starting hand our starting hands have amazing cards make sure you draft for your starting hand that's a, that's a variant rule just just do it even if you barely know how to play just do it and make sure that the cards that you're drafting are, are good somewhat, variety yeah they're good variety they're easier cards that you can yeah so if you get round. really like um insane op cards right in the first round. you get snookered yeah it, it's hard because you can't play any of them and i've had that many times where oh, even like the first time we played i feel like i've had a handful of, like you know you, you need like 20 30 dollars per animal so it's like i don't have i have like seven bucks i can't put anything down yeah but or even the objectives like luck yeah but even the objectives like it could be like oh whoever has the most herbivores you know get five herbivores and you know when it's your turn no herbivores are available 
But when it's in the opponent's turn, they just start popping up. And you're like, oh well. <laughs> then you just take the risk and draw more cards. You can draw more cards as a. Turn. You can. There are ways to mitigate the, the swinginess sometimes. You yeah. can just draw more oh, and more my cards. Fault. He can mitigate his bad luck. <laughs> and snapping does help. Snapping is when you take a card from the board. But it's a uh, face up, so you know what yeah. you're taking. Yeah. It's drawing. So there, there are ways the game down. at least attempts to mitigate it, which is nice. The other thing to keep note of, and the other thing you, that might affect whether or not you want to play this game, is the play time. Play time's long. We play, like I said, we play exclusively two players. It goes from two hours to three hours, somewhere in between there. And I think we take our turns relatively quickly, but we still like to sort of savor the game and play. I don't know. Savor? I don't know if I like, We don't play quickly. We're not just. Okay, let me correct his. He's not wrong. We do take quite a while to play, but I think the problem is normally is some people take their turns analyzing every possible thing they could do. Maximize. And want to make sure that, you know, like nothing they do gives the opponent any points at no. all, ever. No, oh, so, the best thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you do the the break token, right? What you want to do is you want to make sure you look over at the player, the other player, when you know they really don't want to take a break just yet because they don't want the round to end, <laughs> because they're trying to build up something really big, like a like an animal or something, to give them more income for the next round. You go like, ah, oh, I'm gonna break now. <laughs> then you just you just move it all along, and then they get they get screwed. But you're okay because you planned for it. Yeah, I guess that's a good way to interact. Yeah, there's lots of interaction. I like the interaction. <laughs> so what he's saying is you can be a poop head if you, you want can. to be. You can. Yeah. Don't be a poop head. <laughs> but yeah, it's like That's why he has no friends. I have lots of friends. You're my friend. <laughs> but playtime can be a little rough. And like I said, we play exclusively at two players. In fact, we've never played I should say maybe we should open the review with this. We've never played this with anything other than two players. We played like 20, 30 times and we only played two players. We've more than that. I think, we, no way, we, we did try once. It was three players and it took four hours. <laughs> and I was like, never again. Yeah, that's kind of the problem with a lot of these like really good games is that they take so long because you get so freaking invested into them. And it's like you have a new player and then they do dumb things and, and you're like, and you're waiting there for them to be like, I don't know what to do. And you're like, do something. So, and you know, when this game's that you really like and you really know what you're gonna do, is even more frustrating waiting for a new Yeah, sometimes you'll have your, your hand like perfectly planned. You're like, I know what I'm exactly like, what I do. Oh, I can't wait till my turn. And then it's like, if you're playing four players, forget it. Like you just finished your turn and now you're gonna wait for three other people to like, uh, just kind of must putter around and not do anything. That's so, your, yeah. your middle name. Mike, putter <laughs> no. no. So this is a really fantastic two-player game, really good three-player game, and then I just, I don't think I'd play it with four. Unless you're okay with just setting if aside If it's a four-player uh, game night, just be like, you go make dinner for the rest of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think there's a play. But yeah. Yeah, it's, it's such a fantastic game. I mean, it's my favorite game of all time so far. I think there's actually one game, I would say, that has been on my mind non-stop. My favorite game of all time, so probably this. Yeah, what do you give it for a score? What? My favorite game of all time. What do you think I get for a score? 20 out of 10. 20 out of 10? That, there's no score for that. Okay, fine. 50 out of 10. All right, she gives it a 10 out of 10. <laughs> if I, like, every single uh, negative comment he had for it, I'm like... They're quibbles. They're, they're like mic problems. You know, they're not real problems. They're mic problems. <laughs> if I had to, like, narrow down a collection to, like, under 10 games, this would be my very first pick. Like, yeah. easy to keep this game for it. Yeah, yeah, mine too. It definitely in there. I don't, I, I don't know if I'd give it a 10. I think, I think those quibbles, they knock it down to a 9. But like a nine's still good. Like like Kim was saying, I, I still crave this game. I will say this. I, I, I do think this game is the quintessential two player heavy game. Um I I, I really do. Right? I think it plays so brilliantly at two players. Yeah, so it's a solid, solid nine for me. Definitely check it out. We love it. One of our favorites. My absolute favorite. This is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. See you in the next one. Peace.